Hey guys, and welcome back to the CYC channel. Today, we're going to do something very interesting. We're going to take you on an assembly tour of the Photon Gen 2. Join us today and get a sneak peek of exactly what's happening inside our production line so that you guys can see all the measures and the checks that we do to make sure that you guys receive something really cool at the end of the day. So let's go. Okay, so we're starting today's assembly line with showing you guys the first step and it is to make sure that we have the motor stator and the windings all in place. So I have Rikus here, our head mechanical engineer, to explain us a little bit more about the details that's going into the motor stator itself. Okay, so we'll start off with the stator itself. So this is individual uh, molded plates around 0.2 mm thick that's all pinned together and then we start with an individual stator. Then from that we have two plastic molded pieces that go over the stator itself and then we can add it into the machine and the winding will be done by the machine. So this is very specific wire. We had to make a mold to make a flat shaped wire to do the winding. And we made individual stator pieces so that we can um, increase the density of the copper in each of the poles inside the motor. So as well with this machine, the tension is measured when it's being wound. So in order to make a good individual pole, you need uh, the correct tension when you wind it so that you can get good overlap and a good density and very consistent poles inside of the motor. Hey, Rick is quiet there. The team over here has constantly explained to us something or has mentioned that it's not full factor. Can you tell us a little bit more about what that means? Um, so basically the conventional way of making a motor is you will make a stator that's one piece. You will not do it in individual pieces like we're doing now. So the reason we're doing that is to increase the slot full factor, which basically means we can put more copper in the same space than we would with a single piece. And that it's, leads to more efficiency, right? Basically, you can achieve the same amount of torque with less current, which means you generate less heat, which means in the end you get a more efficient motor, even though the manufacturing process becomes more complicated and slightly more costly. I see. Okay. So basically, this is the individual stator before it goes to the winding. So each individual stator comes with like a plastic molded piece that goes around. Um, the reason for the plastic part is one is to guide the wire when you wind it. Secondly, so it doesn't get cut because the wire itself is actually insulated. So they don't contact each other when you wind it, which is why we get to the next step. In order for them to connect them to each other, they need to solder all the wires together, but they insulate it. So we remove the insulation with uh, a laser machine. So if you have a look, then it's removing the insulation from the wire so that they can be soldered together later. So after the insulation is removed, they will cut them and then it will move to the next machine where they'll place all the individual stators together and then weld them to become a single piece. What they're doing now is they take all the individual poles or the like little stator poles, then they'll stack them into this jig. They have like uh, two interlocking parts that we'll show you later. So they interlock and then they place them into a circle. Then at the back, there's uh, basically a, a welding nozzle and it will weld each of the stator poles together to make a, a single piece. So here you can see the like end result. So here they weld it together and then you get all the little individual stators in like one fixed stator. Another part that's super important in checking on the assembly line is the fitment of the motor stator and Rikus is going to explain to us exactly how we do that. So as most people know when you when you weld something there's a lot of like deformation and stuff so it's quite difficult to get it like exactly round because uh, we obviously need to press it into the motor housing itself and then the rotor needs to run internally as well. So in order to check fitment we have these uh, go no go gauges that uh, we'll get a close up of as well, which basically checks the inner diameter and the outer diameter. And it needs to obviously fit within this dimension and then also the inside. The next step in the assembly line is putting on the power board, which now needs to be fixed onto the motor stator itself. So 
This is the power board that connects all the 12 individual stages together. So they'll be connected in a certain um, location. So this uses a fixture to then hold it in the correct position because once all the wires are soldered together because it's like 12 contact points, it's not really going to be able to move anywhere afterwards. So we need to fix it in place before we do the soldering. This is also going to align the three phase wires to the controller as well as the pole sensor for the controller itself. And on this power board, there's also an NTC that's placed in between the coils inside the motor itself. Um, the this... NTC is for heat measuring, right? Yes. So sorry, NTC is basically a temperature sensor. And then generally in uh, motor design, they'll just place a temperature sensor on the PCB board, which just measures like the general temperature of the motor. But for us, we place it inside the, the coils in between. So we measure the true temperature of the motor. Um, and then after it's soldered together, this is the end result. So you'll see the board on top can't really move anymore. It's fixed in place according to a specific location that's slotted on the motor. And yeah, then after this, it will go to potting. So what we do for like uh, vibration uh, dampening and like heat conduction and basically harmonics as well, how the motor sounds. We pot the motor, which is basically filling all the air gap inside with epoxy, epoxy resin. So the way this is done is there's a fixture with a funnel and they'll throw the potting in the top and there's a hole inside. So the potting will fall from the bottom to the top. So one benefit this has is there will be no air bubbles inside because the potting is being filled from the bottom to the top. So it creates a very even um, potting solution inside. So next up, we have the whole sensor fitment. And Rick is challenging me to explain exactly what this means, but um, I'm going to leave it on to the engineers instead. Um, okay, so after we did the power side of the stator, we also need to place the sensor board. So basically, when the rotor is inside, we need to know the position of the rotor. So we place the whole sensor board inside. That's basically just a separate board that sits closer to the rotor itself to know the position of the motor. And so, what exactly does the whole sensor do in the motor's function? Um, as I explained to Carl earlier, uh, generally when a motor is running, you know where the motor is in, in space, but once you're stationary, the position of the rotor is unknown, so you can't just throw current at it and expect it to run. So it's for motor position, position sensing Basically to start the motor. When you're on a hill, you want to start and it's not like sh shuddering at you. You need to know where the motor is. So right. you need a position, some sort of position sensor, either like encoder, pole sensor or something like that. Otherwise, you have a delayed start with like sensorless start, mm -hmm. which will basically pulse two phases to get the position of the motor and then run it. Thank you. Pleasure. Something I forgot to mention as well is after the stator is put together, there's obviously a lot of tolerance in the motor. There's a tolerance for each winding. And then when they put it together, there's a tolerance for each of the phase. So what this machine does is it pulses a very high voltage between each phase, this phase to this phase, this phase to this phase, etc. So it checks if all three phases are consistent. So if you want a good motor, generally a good motor is very balanced in all three phases. And then this will check if all three phases are in an acceptable range for each of the stator. Otherwise, it's not going to make a good motor. After they've positioned the motor hole sensor and secured that fastly, they are going to put in keys into the motor housing itself. Now, they glue these keys together and then bake it inside so that we can speed up the assembly process. The keys are specifically inserted into the motor housing to ensure that the stator stays in place as soon as it's, um, as soon as it's pressed in. What she's doing right now is, as Kathy mentioned, there's keyways inside the housing. So the stator needs to be lined up with the housing in the correct position. Otherwise, the whole sensors aren't going to line up. The controller can't plug in. Like the orientation needs to be correct. And obviously, the mouse has a top and a bottom side. So you see the press fixture has those key slots. So when it presses, it can surpass the keys because the keys are inside. So it's pressing the stator inside. So also when the stator is being pressed, okay, you can go. Also when it's being pressed inside, 
this machine will tell you the distance and the force of when it's being pressed. So you know if the fitment is correct. Uh, there's basically an acceptance range. So it will tell you at, at what height or length the, the force is. So like if, if it's wrong, it will pick it up here. If the, for example, we check the quality of the housing, we check the quality of the stator. But even if there's something wrong, it will get picked up with the fitment because it doesn't fit. It needs to press too hard or the distance isn't going all the way. Like it, it will get picked up in the acceptance range. Okay, that concludes the stator part of the motor's assembly, which mainly consists of the windings, the housing, and the plotting. Now we're going to be moving on to the rotor itself and the magnets going into that. Yeah, well said. Um, so what they're doing here is first they'll sort the magnets because obviously you need north, south, north, south, north, south. They're all flipped all the time. So every second magnet will be north altogether or like every second one will be south together and then they press from both sides. So here yeah, they're sorting the magnets, putting it into the rotor itself, and then they're also gluing the magnets, which uh, with a very specific glue that we've tested with a bunch of heat and cold cycles to make sure that the glue is not degrading over its time. And after it's glued, they put it into this machine and then it presses it into the stator. And then after it's pressed in, it will also go through a quality check where they'll use basically a sheet with ferrous metals inside to see if the magnetic field is correct. Because if the north-south is done incorrectly, you can pick it up with that uh, sheet of ferrous metals inside. Okay, so after they've made the rotor, they need to put the gear shaft into the rotor as well. So they'll take, the, they'll take two copper pieces, front and back, brass pieces actually, sorry, not copper, the, and the motor shaft, and they'll stack them together and then uh, put them in the press and then press them into this assembly. So one of the reasons for the brass pieces is, as you can see, they drill small holes for the balancing of the rotor. So after the rotor is completely assembled, it will go into this machine. Then this machine will rotate it with lasers and uh, with a specific mark on the motor, uh, analyze the rotation and then drill holes in specific places to balance the rotor, which also basically helps with noise and vibration from the motor so that the motor is running very smoothly. And then after the balancing, it will come here and then they'll press the bearings in front and back. And then after balancing, bearing, snap ring, then you have the full rotor assembly. So as I mentioned before, they'll put a mark on the rotor so that they can analyze the vibration when they spin it to then drill, basically like balancing a car tire. And then this is the final rotor assembly. Then after they finish the rotor assembly, We'll move to the next part where they'll put the rest of the motor together because we have the stator and the rotor and then they'll finish the motor assembly. The final status of the assembly. Rikus, are we just putting on the motor cover here or what are we doing? Um, it's a bit more complicated than that because the rotor is magnetic mm -hmm. and the stator is also magnetic, they want to stick together. So they use this fixture to align everything and then basically the rotor is neatly placed inside. Right. So they'll put on the, the front cover or the back cover, I'm not sure which way they do it first. Um, and then basically install the rotor into the stator so it doesn't damage the whole sensor board that we spoke yeah. about Can't earlier before because if you just do it by hand then everything kind of just Smash it together. <laughs> okay, makes sense. Um, else? Okay, uh, then they'll also add the front cover. And then after, this is just a press to put the bearing in for the motor oh, assembly. Mm -hmm. You know, for the first stage, we have yes. the bearing on top of the motor. So they need to press that in. Mm -hmm. Then the front cover goes on. Then the motor is done, assembled. Then Perfect. we move to this test where they'll do the okay, laser okay. etching. This is the QR code. So after the motor is done, they'll put a QR code on it. Perfect. And then after it's got a QR code, the motor has been born. Now we have a motor. Then <laughs> it will come to this station where they'll, they'll run it with no load. So this motor is spinning the motor shaft when they put it inside and they'll analyze if the three phase is normal, the feedback from the So it's just the, the final motor. check for after Final assembly. check, yes. Perfect. And then the last check is actually running the motor. So right. this is a little gyroscope mm -hmm. that can measure your X, Y, Z movement. So mm -hmm. they'll run it and then see if the motor is vibrating or not and then log it. Perfect. So they'll scan the QR code 
and then run it and then log the decibel noise as well as the vibration and then you have the motor characteristics. Excellent. And then it will move to the final assembly line with the full motor system. Okay, now we're moving on to the next bit of the assembly line and it is checking the motor body and doing the assembly for that and then also the full product assembly and checking. Well done. Okay, so we'll start here with the, basically the retaining cap for the spider. It's a very simple operation, but basically what they'll do is they'll press the bearing in, they'll do the water sealing grease and then put the nylon cover in. It's just an example of uh, the precautions we've been taking for the assembly quality of this current product for the Gen 2 motor. Okay guys, I'm quickly going to run you through the assembly line of the main body on this side. So we started off with the um, first assembly stage, which basically they're doing the retaining cover as well as the final stage gear with uh, both bearing presses. After that, they'll come to this stage where the main body already arrives with the torque sensor bearing pressed inside. Then they'll install the transfer PCB, which is the communication between the stationary torque sensor to the controller side. After this is done, they'll take the final stage bearing, bring it to here, then they'll do the like automated greasing process. So all the grease amounts are controlled or exactly the same for each unit. After it's greased, they will get pressed into the main body, then move to this stage where they'll add the waterproof grease for the final stage bearing and add the shield for the bearing to prevent like water ingress and build up of materials. Um, after that stage, they'll add the retaining ring to kind of seal off the final stage, meaning like everything's in, the electronics in, and everything's locked in. Then they'll move to the stationary PCB for the torque sensor. So put in the electronics to communicate to the controller. Then after the electronics is inside, they'll do another automated grease process to put the grease for the final stage sprack clutch inside. So they'll do one run for the outer diameter, put the sprack clutch in, and then one run for the inner diameter. Then they'll put in the rotational torque sensor. Then all the assembly for the main body from the external side is basically done. They don't need to work on that side anymore. Then they'll flip it to the other side. Then start with the first stage assembly. After the first stage assembly is done, they'll insert it into the body. So then they'll add grease, add uh, Loctite to the bearing, put the first stage assembly inside, and then the main body assembly is basically done. After the main body assembly is finished, they'll move to this stage where they have all the finished main body assemblies. They'll take the motor and the controller, sandwich all three of them together and then tighten it up. After this, the main assembly of the product is done. Then they'll move to like uh, OQC or like an overall quality check to see if everything is running smoothly and there's no like funny noises or anything like nothing is missed in the assembly. If that process has been completed, it will go into an OQC loading, which means it will check like the torque sensor readings, power readings, efficiency, basically confirm that all the IOs are working and the product is functioning as is. Then after the product uh, is confirmed that it's functioning correctly, we also have an air sealing test. So this is an air sealing test. So they'll put the motor unit inside, there's an O-ring top and bottom, it will clamp the unit from both sides, then increase the pressure to around 12 kilopascals, then keep it there for one minute and then make sure that the pressure is not varying. If the pressure stays the same, then we know there's no leaks in the unit and it's airtight. After it's airtight, it will move to the OQC. So here we have the OQC machine that gives like a human pedal input output so we can run the motor performance, check the torque sensor readings as well, check all the IOs, temperature, display, uh, headlight, rear light, all of that. And then after the unit has been confirmed, it's passed, it will go to final assembly. They will add the retaining cap and the chain ring and then in the end we have the final assembled unit that looks like this. So you'll have the chain ring on, retaining cap and the unit is being checked and fully assembled. Well, that concludes our tour for you guys on the Photon Gen 2's assembly line. Brigus, thank you so much for taking us through the steps. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Um, I hope you guys found it informative. If there's any questions or details I've left out, please be sure to contact us and ask.
yeah, if you guys uh, want to know anything more about what's going on behind the scenes, or if you want to go check out the motor, please be sure to visit cycmotor.com and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.